In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an arrow animation inside of Adobe Photoshop and Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So we're splitting this process up between Photoshop and After Effects. Photoshop is going to be used to actually design the arrows and then After Effects is going to be used to animate those arrows. Now, if you don't have Photoshop and you only have Adobe After Effects, then I will make a bunch of arrow presets made in Photoshop available for you to download. So you can just download those and jump straight to the After Effects section of this tutorial. However, if you do have Photoshop and want to start from scratch, then let's jump into Photoshop. So first of all, I've got a brand new canvas created inside of Photoshop. That is the same width and height of my After Effects composition. So I've gone for 3840 by 2160. And that's the same in Adobe After Effects. So that means when we export this and drop it into After Effects, we won't have to rescale this. It'll be nice and consistent. And then you can see I've already got a black background and that's because I've got a black background in After Effects. So in order to create this arrow, we first just want to go up into Layer, New, Layer. Press OK on this. And then we'll go into the Paintbrush tool on the left of Photoshop. We'll go up here to the brush and we'll go ahead and increase the size of this and feel free, by the way, to go through all of these presets. So you can see you've got some dry media brushes, you've got some wet media brushes, some special effect brushes, but I'm just going to go into dry media and I'm going to select Kyle Ultimate Charcoal Pencil. And I'm just going to increase the size of this. And now when I just scribble on the canvas, you can see nothing is happening. So I'm just going to change the color of this to white press OK and we'll try again. There we go. We're now seeing it. So from here, I'm just going to increase the size of that brush. So we'll go up to 140. And as you can see, that looks a lot better. So I'm first just going to start off by drawing a straight line for the arrow. So I'm going to go for this. Now I'm going to go up into layer, new layer, press OK. And I'm just going to do this part of the arrow. There you go. Now we'll go back into layer, new layer, press OK, and we'll do the other side of the arrow. Feel free to get this perfect, by the way. Keep trying. I'm just undoing this until I get to one that I'm happy with. There you go. That looks good. So you can see I've got all of these on their separate layers. So you've got this, this, and this. And this is really important when it comes to animating because we're going to animate them individually. Now, of course, you don't have to go for the straight arrow. You could go for one which loops around like this. You could go for a spiral one, go for a zigzag. Just make sure every part of that arrow is on its separate layer. So once you've done that, just turn off the background layer. Then we'll go File, Save As, Save on your computer. And then you can go ahead and rename this to arrow.psd. Make sure the format is Photoshop and then we'll just press save and just press OK on that. Now we're going to jump into After Effects and get that Photoshop document imported into After Effects. Now, before we carry on with this video, I'm first just going to take a quick break to talk about the Brooker Films courses. And in particular, I want to mention the After Effects course. Over on Skillshare, I have a two hour plus Adobe After Effects course, which covers everything from importing your footage to creating new shapes, masking, green screening, rotoscoping. It covers everything you could ever need when you're first getting started into Adobe After Effects. So if you're new to After Effects or you're just trying to brush up on some new skills, then click the link in the description below to check out the course. Now back to the video. So make sure the project tab is open. Then we're just going to go into our finder, find that arrow, as you can see, that is there. I'm just going to drop this into After Effects and it will come up with this pop up menu. So it says import kind composition. So we'll select composition and then you can either select editable layer styles or merge layer styles. Editable is going to separate them. Merge layer is going to merge them into one image. We want these separate. So select layer styles. Then you can see if we drag this into our composition, we've got this arrow. But if we go into this pre comp, we've got all of those individual layers like this. So I'm just going to delete the background and we'll copy those layers. Go back to our comp, we'll delete the pre comp and add those all in. So you can see we've got our three layers of our arrow now there. Now there's multiple different ways of animating these lines on. You can just go for a basic mask 
or alternatively, you can go for the right on effect. So let's show you the masking method first, and I'm just going to work on this layer for now. So the masking method is as simple as it sounds. You just go up to the pen tool, draw a mask around the completed line, go roughly a second in, go into your mask, create a brand new keyframe on mask path, move backwards in time, and then you're just going to pull that mask off screen. And when we play this back, you can see that's going to animate in like this. The problem is though, we have got this hard edge and we want this to look natural. So you can increase the mask feather to soften that out a little. However, if that's still not giving you the look that you want, if you don't want this soft feathered edge, then rather than doing the mask, we can go for the right on effect. So we'll go into effects and presets and we'll search for right on. That'd be in generate. So drop this onto that layer. Then from here, you can see you've got brush position, color, brush size, brush hardness, all of these other settings. Then you've got paint style and you want to put reveal original image and that's going to get rid of that. So we're just going to keep that on original image for now. Then we're going to move the brush position to so this. We're going to move it to the very left, to the very start of here. We'll go back to the beginning and create a brand new keyframe on brush position. We'll go roughly a second over and then we'll move that position up to the top right. Now, it doesn't look like anything has happened, but if we zoom in and go over here, you can see you've got this dotted line. And that is what we have created. So we're just going to zoom back out to the fit and we'll go into brush size and we'll increase brush size until it completely covers that line. So as you can see, that has now covered the line. However, if for some reason it does spill out and you've pulled the brush size all the way up, then just add another point in there. So just move that so that it now follows. There you go. But once you've done that, you can now go back into paint style, go to reveal original image. And now you can see that is going to animate on exactly the way that we want it to. So you can tell that instantly looks a lot more natural and a lot nicer than the previous method, the masking method. So all you need to do now is just go through that same process for the other layers. So let's go to layer two. We'll go to right on, pull the position up here, brand new keyframe on the brush position. We'll move over a second and we'll pull this over to the left. Then we'll increase that brush size again. And again, we might have to make a fine adjustment halfway through the movement. But once you've done that, then you just go into reveal original image. And now let's see how this looks. There we go. So once we render this out and we play this back, you can see that looks really nice. And of course, you can always change the position of these keyframes on the brush position to speed this up or slow this down. But let's just go to that last layer again. And we'll animate this in at roughly the same time as the other one. So we'll drag the right on effect onto this one. Move the brush position up here. Brand new keyframe and brush position. Move to two pull the brush position down, increase the brush size, and then we'll go reveal original image. And now when we render this out, you can see we've got our arrow animation now completed in Adobe After Effects. Now, if you wanted this animation to look a little bit more natural, because at the moment it feels a little robotic, we're going to have to convert those keyframes from a linear to easy ease. It sounds complicated, but it's not actually that complicated. So we'll go into each layer, go into effects right on and that should reveal these keyframes so effects and right on and then on the bottom effects and right on and then you just want to highlight all of those keyframes we'll right click on one of them then go to keyframe assistant and select easy ease and now when we play this back you'll notice the animation style is more smooth and has a little bit more character than it did before of course, though, if this isn't to your taste, then you don't have to go for that. You can just keep that to what it was before, or you could go for an ease in or an ease out. Just experiment with these. But once you've got that arrow animating on, all you have to do is highlight all of those layers. We'll right click, go pre-compose, and we'll call this arrow. Then you've got the flexibility to adjust the scale, position, and rotation of this layer so we can rotate this around, do what we need to do with this layer, move this into position. And that's just going to animate on exactly how we want it to. But there you go. That is how you create this arrow animation inside of Adobe After Effects and Adobe Photoshop.
Again, like I mentioned at the start of the video, if you don't have Photoshop, then I'll upload a few arrow presets made in Photoshop for you to download and experiment with inside of Adobe After Effects. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.